Hello, today I'm going to talk about how to deal with uncertainty in investments and in life. So this comes because I was having a conversation with my friend Mercedes and she was telling me, well, I will invest in the stock market when things calm down. And this, this is what she told me right after the big pandemic of uh, COVID-19, the world was falling apart, there were news of people dying everywhere, and it was a time full of uncertainty. And of course, she, uh, she was afraid, which is normal, many of us were afraid, and she saw everything, uh, uh, all her investments, and then I say, well, you know, this is this is crazy. You don't sell on a panic. But she was afraid. And then she told me that phrase, I will invest again when things come down. The thing is that when things came down, the, there was a, um, a discount when there was a lot of uncertainty and risk. And then when things came, uh, came down, supposedly, then the prices were much higher and she lost an opportunity to uh, gain an, a 20% on her investment, which was that much of a rebound when, uh, when people felt like, oh, it's not the end of the world. But the thing is that uncertainty is always lurking behind us, or it's always sitting on our shoulders. And even when things seem calm, they are never calm, you know, like, when uh, the uh, terrorist attack of 9-11 happened, you know, people had the illusion that everything was calm and people were living their every day to day life. But in, cert but in truth, it they were facing the biggest amount of uncertainty the next day when the terrorist uh, attacks uh, came into fruition. So there is always uncertainty. Sometimes we feel it, sometimes we don't but uncertainty is never there. And what happens is that sometimes when we have this chaotic time, then the thing that goes after that is a long period of peace and prosperity. So for example, between World War I and World War II, there were 20 years and nine months of peace and prosperity. But you wouldn't know that people were killing each other, but if you were an investor at that time and you you would have just benefited from all this peace and prosperity in your portfolio and after world war ii which was a horrendous event in life we had practically 80 years of economic scientific and technological improvement seems like china india and brazil were getting uh, getting millions of people out of, out of poverty. The internet happened and now we have huge amount of communication between businesses, governments and people. You know, like now with Skype and, and I don't know, Facebook and WhatsApp, I can communicate with the other side of the world in seconds practically for free. And not to mention medicine, medical breakthroughs, which there are so many new drugs coming on, healing all kinds of uh, diseases, sicknesses, even the, uh, the vaccine for COVID-19, it was developed in such a record time that it's just still incredible. So, uh, you know, how to deal with uncertainty in the stock market? I am 56 years old now, and I have seen many cycles. I have seen boss and, uh, boom and bust, and I know the most effective way to deal with uncertainty is to sit on my hands and do exactly nothing. Because I know already for a fact that markets work on cycle, uh, cycles. I'm not a market timer, so I never know when the peak or the, or, or the bottom of the cycle is. And the best thing that I can do for my portfolio, for my financial health, is just to sit on my hands and do nothing. And maybe if I can afford it, buy a little bit more. Okay, so now how to deal with uncertainty in life is a little bit more of a complicated question because I don't have the answers. I ask people in my community to tell me how they deal 
with uncertainty. So I got several answers here are my friends who answer. So I start with the answer from Kelly Brown Johnson, who is an advisor supporting businesses to create completely inclusive workplace cultures. Now, the way that she deals with uncertainty is, she says, I just try to take one day at a time and one task at a time and keep going. So she just focuses on what she's doing. Even if the world around her is falling apart, she just take one task at a time and just do it and then do the next one. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And I think I have done that. I go into my routine of the day and even if things are falling apart, if I can just follow my routine, let's say my exercises, my eating at the same time, so on and so forth, that helps me a lot to deal with uncertainty. Now, Lynn Sock, who is a financial advisor and mortgage broker, this is what she has to say. My approach is more like, okay, how am I going to, uh, to approach this? And she sits down and thinks about her problem. And I guess she does something similar to Kelly Brown Johnson. She takes one side and one task at a time. Now, another question, another answer by Nara Lopez Contreras, who is a copywriter and digital media strategist. She says that accepting that uncertainty is the norm, not the exception. So we have to accept that we are always living on uncertainty and that is the norm. Okay? It's not uh, it's not um, it's not an exception. Uh, Kateri Bunchia, uh, who is uh, a friend, he, she's almost a neighbor of mine. She's a payment expert and by, in banking and fintech and retail and mobility, and uh, she works under the assumption of the worst case scenario uh, of of. She manages uncertainty by making assumptions, okay? So she considers the worst case scenario and plan A, B, and C. If I don't have control over what will happen, at least it allows me to be ready for, the event, for any eventuality. Okay, so that's great. Now, my friend Cheryl Williams, who is an English as a second language a teacher and a dance teacher, she says, remind myself that nothing is ever certain. So something like the same point of view of, um, of uh, Nara Lopez Contreras, no, nothing is ever certain, okay? Uh, notice is the worrying about uncertainty that is most disconcerting. Once shit hits the fan, people instinctively add, and that's always easier than worrying. I think those are such a wise word. You know, sometimes the worrying is a lot worse than, than the outcome of the uh, uncertainty. And finally, me, Alain Guillot, the way that I deal with uncertainty is that I call everyone that accepts a call from me, whether it's my family, friends, uh, community groups, and I tell them, look, I'm afraid, I am feeling secure about this, I don't know what the future will bring. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this situation. And most of the time, my friends or family, they just listen. They don't tell me, uh, they don't give me any pieces of uh, advice, but just the mere fact of speaking with them, it helps me deal with my uncertainty. So overall, remember that it's okay to feel uncertain and that you don't have to have all the answers. Learning to navigate uncertainty is a lifelong process and developing resilience and coping skills can contribute to a more fulfilling and balanced life. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you next time. Goodbye.